Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mooch News for the week of June 10th. We're up close today because the next bunch of videos will be done this way and uh, it was just easier. Uh, first thing up is the pre-testing I did on the RX, uh, the Wismac RX Machina. I had chosen this one for the pre-testing because it was going to provide some additional challenges. Uh, the sleep being a little bit long, this take, being hard to screw on, the extra parts down in here, all that made the test plan a little bit harder and added some variables that I needed to take into account. And I wanted to know about those, experiment with them, play with them in advance as opposed to having them surprise me later on. So this was picked earlier. Now, you saw me in the pre-testing video of the Mining Your Mechs uh, video that I just did uh, well, a few days ago that I was cranking down really hard and noting that it made a difference in the resistance. I am not advocating doing that with your batteries. You can badly damage the batteries. You can possibly cause a short circuit if you dent the top or the bottom too badly. It was just meant to be uh, as a way of demonstrating that for this mech and maybe others, tightening down very, very tightly can affect the resistance. For all my testing, I'm just gonna do, quote, normal tightness. That actually tested out pretty consistently. The inconsistencies were due to, excuse me, testing very, very tightly, tightening very tightly, loosely, the bottom tightening, and other things that are going on. But I found a pretty consistent results just by tightening it the way, quote, normally. I won't be using a torque wrench. Uh, it's just not needed. The results were pretty consistent. Now, some people were worried that this slug that I use, that 2700 and 18650 slug that goes inside so the current can pass through the mech, that this might be lengthening uh, from the heat and causing the resistance to go down. Now, nothing in the mod gets higher than like 45C except for some little choke points I'll point out underneath here where they cut out the mech. This thing barely gets above room temperature, uh, down to hundredth of a mi millimeter with this uh, caliber, I was not able to measure any change in length. Even when I made this too long, excuse me, too hot to touch, over 70 degrees Celsius, and the wrap was splitting and everything, I only measured about three thousandths of an inch length. And since this moves back and forth with the button press, even that sheet of paper length difference, three thousandths, doesn't make any difference in resistance. So, and it runs practically room temperature. So we can discount this having any effect on the resistance. Now, a big change I'll be making is I'll be switching from the Goon 1.5, which is in here, over to a pair of Cosmonauts I bought. Uh, number one, I want my Goon back because I actually vape with that a lot. And I, though I'm digging the Cosmonaut, especially, I just love that blue. That's my favorite color. The reason I like the Cosmonaut, uh, a lot of people recommend it, but also because the way that the deck is arranged is allows me to have the wires come straight out the top without making a right angle and then up and out of the atomizer like I had to do for the goon. So it's just more of a direct connection. Uh, the gold plating I like because I don't have to deal with some things, oxidation internally and stuff like that. So I think this is going to work out. And then I may pot the inside with uh, epoxy once it's done. Just tape over the slots, assemble it, fill it up with epoxy, and just have a pair of those running. Now, some people are saying, hey, you know, you, you should test these atomizers, which is the lowest resistance. It won't matter. There's not much resist resistance difference between atomizers. And I'll do atomizer, atomizer, direct comparisons later on in the year. Really just need to use the same atomizer for every single one of the mechs that I test. That way we can discount the resistance of this. But I'll, I'll go ahead and measure this resistance because that way we can subtract the resistance of the slug, resistance of the atomizer, and we're left the resistance of this. But it really doesn't matter too much because the relative differences will still be there. Now, Part of some people are saying, hey, compare different metals and things like that for the mech testing. I'm going to have the Dreamer in four metals with four different pin types. So we'll be able to, once I select the best, the lowest resistance Dreamer at least, try to four different pin types. Now that won't be representative of what the results for every mech out there in the world, but it'll answer a lot of questions. Uh, does the mech tube metal make a difference or is it other things that make a difference? And using a piece of equipment, which you can't see up over here, the resistance tester, I can measure down to micro ohms the resistance of the tube itself, which I'll be doing for every mech, just to have that as part of data. In addition, to about a dozen mechs of mine and a package of mechs arriving hopefully soon from somebody who really knows mechs and, and has included some really cool ones there. Now, previous testing. Um, Samsung 24S, an astounding battery, second only to the 20S 
for the hardest hitting 18650 better than any of the sony vtc's uh, about 25 amps 2400 ma fantastic battery highly recommended of course very hard to find that's going to take a while for that to uh, be more available and here's the uh, 20s which is the hardest hitting one i tested a little bit earlier uh, 2000 ma though of course higher current rated rating harding excuse me harder hitting typically results in lower capacity i also tested out the mxjo 4000 ma 20 amp battery accurate capacity rating accurate current rating very pleasant to see unfortunately they had a pulse current here rating but uh, okay it's a good first step good all around 20 amp 21700 battery if some of the 30t's and 40t's aren't available you can use that and speaking of which the samsung 40t there's some problems here not necessarily well maybe necessarily with the battery but not really i've been formed by someone who i trust very much in the battery business side of things that the 40t every single one that's available now are pre-production samples and production doesn't start for several more weeks and the ones we have now may or may not be the same as the production ones i'm hoping they're not because these are testing out all of them the ones i tested in december and the ones i tested just recently are about 25 amp cells at 35 amps which is the data sheet rating for these these run up near 90 degrees Celsius. That is way too hot to be a rating. And especially for Samsung, which typically runs all the batteries at a lower temperature. Name their rating results in a lower battery temperature than uh, LG or, or Sony by several degrees Celsius. So it, it, it makes, something doesn't make sense. And I'm hoping that the production cells, whenever they're available, I will test them and they'll get a genuine 35 amp rating. Uh, Cause 35 amps and 4,000 ma, would be mind-boggling and would equal the current rating of the 30T but provide you with 33% more capacity. So hopefully these get better, but right now it looks like they're all sample cells. Also, thanks to my patrons and their voting, this is gonna be tested, the Joytech backpack. I'm also gonna be testing um, the Avatar batteries that they come with, the nickel metal hydride batteries, and I'm just going to throw in some Duracells and start to see the difference. Really, things I want to check for is, will the backpack try to charge Duracells, which is a real safety hazard, uh, or can it differentiate and only charge nickel metal hydrides? And also just to see basically, you know, that, that seven watts it operates at, are there any safety issues? I doubt it. I'm really more concerned about how it, how it handles the batteries. Also coming up, after whipping up this, and having all kinds of grief, is PW theory. I won't be going through uh, different PWM and mods, mods and uh, specifics of how each one works. I'll go through the concept of PWM, some of the pitfalls where with straight PWM boards, how these little $2 meters can give you a very incorrect reading. And I've set up a MOSFET and uh, some little other mods here uh, to a basic PWM circuit where we can vary the frequency and the duty cycle, the width of the pulse. And I'll put, a, put up an oscilloscope here so we can get a nice graphical image of what PWM is and what we have to be careful of when measuring voltage is what type of voltage. Lastly, the new testing coming up. Um, the VAP cell, I don't have it here, so I'll just hold up something, uh, empty space. I'll be getting samples of the VAP cell 15 amp, 5000 ma. I don't know if that is the M36 2170, 2100, excuse me, but I'll be getting samples of that. Hopefully, I'll also be getting more uh, 40Ts soon. I don't think those will be production, but I want to test them out anyway. This is coming up, the 25S. Oh, yes, now we're starting to see S-series uh, batteries from Samsung starting to get up into some really good usable capacity ranges for a lot more people. 2500 ma, the current rating, we'll find out in testing, but I uh, have high helps with this. Even if it's something like 25 amps, that's okay, because all these S's, 20S, 24S, and 25S, are much harder hitters than like the Sony VTCs and other cells we have. And so even if it's just 25 amps, if it's a hard hitter like the other ones, it'll still be better than like the VTC5A, which is awesome. Next on testing will be also 21700 from VRK. They tag it as a 3750 ma, 25 amp continues, it's nice to see, useless. 40 amp on it, but hopefully it's a good performing uh, 21700 that it's available for a lot of people. Also testing 
I don't know if we can actually see that VT4, not VTC4, VT4. This is supposed to be a 22 amp, 2000 ma. Had an okay AC internal resistance. It didn't indicate a spectacularly hard hitter, but if it's the equal or better than the VTC4 and the VT series, uh, have been pretty good performers. Uh, then this might be the follow-on to replacement for VTC4. We'll also be testing the Samsung 50E. Now this one is probably in the 8 to 10 amp range. I don't remember if I even have the data sheet yet. I have to check. But let's say, you know, that's 25 to 30 watts at 5,000 ma. So if a pair of these, you don't mind carrying a ma, or let's say this is the at-home battery, or if you have a, a two of these in a mod, you know, 10,000 ma at uh, 50, 60 watts, that can end up being a pretty good, you're going all day without any worries there. Uh, the rest of the testing will be done with different things pop up. I'm going to do some new wiring harnesses, uh, changing here to uh, terminal, setting these up so I can plug them in and out, and getting ready for the mech testing that's going to start soon. And then 18350 testing is ongoing thanks to my patrons and, and their votes for where my full-time work goes, which will be charger testing. Uh, the mech testing continued and 18350 testing. I have seven more batteries to test in addition to the VAP cell I tested earlier for the 18350s. And that will be coming up in the next couple of days. I'll then do a shootout of all of them and we'll pick out the best performance for the 1850s, 18350s. I seem to have a little trouble speaking clearly tonight. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching.